Peggy 16. Infamous games have always been about really one core thing. It's this origin story that you get to, to live out. You're an everyday person who gets superpowers and decides if you want to use them for good or evil. Infamous Second Son is the story of Delson Rowe. Delson is a 20-something Seattle kid uh, who develops superhuman abilities. And he deals with how society is treating anybody with superhuman abilities. It's a situation where this group of Homeland Security type people, we call them the Department of Unified Protection, swarm into the city to eradicate all of the superhumans that are there. And it's his struggle against that group of people and kind of coming to terms with how he feels and how his family feels about people who have these superhuman abilities. In a book or movie, you're gonna tell one story, right? And it's gonna be your story. You're gonna tell a specific story. Whereas a game, you're going to partner with the player, or sometimes a group of players, and you're going to tell a story together. And you're going to tell parts of the story, and they're going to tell parts of the story, and they're much more invested, they're much more engaged with the story that you're telling, because they're participating in it. And the controller is the interface that the player uses. So the designer has video, they have audio, they have um, story and dialogue, they have all these tools for communicating with the player, player only has one tool for communicating back and engaging in the conversation, and it's the controller. And the PS4 controller is significantly improved from previous controllers. We've always felt like uh, the controller itself and the ability for the user, for the player, to express himself to us um, was the most important place for innovation. A lot of the improvements to the controller are about how it feels. So the sticks feel more responsive and the triggers uh, feel more comfortable and the buttons feel crisper. All of those things really improve the quality of the gameplay experience for everyone who plays on the system. Um, and I think that stuff is so incredibly important. It's kind of the foundation that you build the house on. If you get that wrong, you just can't get anywhere. And so I think it's really, really important what they've done with the controller. But then there's also some exciting new things that, that give us as game makers a chance to try and get players small but, but exciting new experiences. And our goal is really to examine that and say, how do we, again, compress the distance between what the player is doing and what's happening in the game? And so the example um, that, that I'll give is there's a test that's been created in the infamous Second Son universe to identify people who have the conduit gene, who could develop superhuman abilities. And that test requires a scanning of your finger. And so you have to go up, you know, sort of like going through airport security, but you have to go up and place your finger and, and get scanned. Normally you would just have the player hit the triangle button or something, right? But with the PlayStation 4, you can actually have the player place their tip of their finger on the pad in exactly the motion that Delson is doing. That gives you a more direct experience. And again, we're not going to be having you press your finger during the entire game, but rather at these key moments, letting you express something in a direct way rather than in an indirect way. One of the things about Second Son I'm really excited to let players get their hands on are the control. We've really streamlined them so that you can use any of your powers whenever you want and all sorts of different circumstances. So people will be comboing the uses of their powers and their moves and their attacks really fluidly. We actually went through and we completely revised the control scheme to make it easier to learn and also kind of more expressive when you're using your powers. In order to be a frontline next-gen game, you have to be next-gen on a bunch of axes, right? You have to, uh, you know, the first thing everybody looks at and thinks about is visual fidelity, and certainly that's an important part of it. And I think the thing that's uh, so next-gen about this game is that all the next-gen things are kind of under the hood. You're not sitting sitting there staring at a normal map. You're not sitting there staring at an amazing uh, particle effect. No, you're looking at puddles, you're looking at rain, you're looking at uh, a real building in front of you. It's also important that your AI and your particle systems and everything else have been stepped up. Our sound is all high dynamic range this time. Every single element of the game has to get, you have to turn over the rocks, change all of the underlying assumptions and improve them. That's what this business is. You, you have to step back and you have to look at it and say, hey, we made all these assumptions about how things should work, how things should be built. You have to rethink how everything works when you jump generations. And that was a great time for us to also rethink the character and the power set. 
because you already sort of proverbially have all the parts on the floor. It's a great time to think about how you want to put them back together. Um, and it gives us a lot of energy around doing another game in this universe because there's so much for us to go build and go discover uh, what's possible. You know, the dreams that we had that were impossible actually become possible. Um, and so it's fun to kind of try and capture some of those moments and bring them into your game.